Hi, I'm Seven Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Aging of Class II Ceramic Capacitors. Let me say a few words about the background. One would expect that after so many years that the multi-layer ceramic capacitor have been around and are extensively used in design and production of various equipment, the specification of these capacitor will now be completely defined so that the behavior of the capacitor can be reliably expected. Well, surprise, surprise, this is not the case. As it turns out, there are many aspects of the class two ceramic capacitor that are not very well known and certainly not very well specified. One of them is the aging effect. This presentation covers the information that is now available about the subject of multi-layer ceramic capacitor aging and its many unknowns. So let me start with some background here, which is related to the subject we are going to talk about, and this is the effect of DC bias on the capacitance. Talking about class two capacitor, this is an X7R capacitor, and we see that as we impose the capacitor to a DC bias voltage, capacitance, this is the small signal of differential capacitance, is going down to minus 80% of the initial value, that's a lot. This is within the operational range of the capacitor. This is not outside of range. And here is a description of what happens with different materials. For the class one NPO, there's really no DC bias effect. For X7R and the other class two materials, there is an effect. This is a generic plot, not necessarily one particular capacitor. And we see that X7R has some drop here with the, with the DC bias, and the other one actually has a much larger drop. And what is really surprising is that for the same size of package, capacitor and maximum voltage and specified material, X7R, different manufacturers will produce capacitor of different behavior. And here it's showing a difference between, say, supplier one or two, whatever. They are not revealing the name of the manufacturer. That's from this paper. And you see that for this one, there's a really moderate drop, while for the other one, the drop is larger. So it really changes from manufacturer to manufacturer. Apparently, the materials are, of course, not the same. Now, what is the reason for this DC bias sensitivity? Well, it turns out that the material, the dielectric material of the class two capacitor, the ferroelectric material, has electrical domain. And when these domains are randomly arranged, you have the maximum capacitance because there is a room for rearrangement, you might say, okay? And then if they are already arranged, then there is less room for rearrangement and therefore the capacitance is smaller. So this is what happens when you expose the capacitor to a DC bias. It is arranging this domain and therefore the capacitance, the small signal capacitance is dropping. Now if you take this material, the electric material or the capacitor with this dielectric material and heat it above the Curie point, Curie point is the point in which materials like this are actually losing their characteristics. For example, in the case of ferromagnetic material, if you hit the ferrite above the Curie point, it will stop being ferromagnetic. And here, it stops to be ferroelectric. So if you hit the material above the Curie point, it is sort of crystallizes and, and get the shape of the crystal, the basic crystal of the structure. And when you cool it, these electrical domain are arranged in a random way. So, so in this case, the incremental small signal capacitance is the largest. However, during time, they are sort of tend to rearrange themselves toward a certain direction, which means that the capacitance is dropping. So the effect of aging is due to the rearrangement of this electrical domain so as to be in the same direction or sort of same direction, and therefore you are losing the capacitance. Now, if you hit it again above the Curie point, this is reversible, okay? So you start again with a maximum capacitor. So here is a typical behavior when what is shown here 
is a class one with NPO C0G capacitor, which has no aging effect, X7R and another class two capacitor. And we see that the X7R is dropping with time. This is a semi-log plot. This is percent drop, and this is time. And you see that over time, the capacitance, small signal capacitance, is dropping. Now, you can describe this behavior by this equation. This is the logarithmic expression. This k is like percent, and for X7R, it's 3% meaning that if the reference uh, point is 100 hours and the value is C1, then after 1,000 hours, the capacitor will drop or the capacitance will drop by minus 3% for X7R. And at 10,000 hours, another decade, it will be minus 6. So it is a decade type of a behavior, logarithmic behavior. And for X7R, it is 3%. For X5R, it's larger than that. And there are some others which are even larger than that. So this is the aging effect, which is documented by experiment. Now, unfortunately, manufacturers don't give this information. I should point out that Kemet is probably the only one, that, at least that I found, that is really giving this information. Other vendors do not give information related to specific group of capacitor or product rather than very general information on behavior of aging. But if you pick up a certain capacitor from another manufacturer, you really don't know what is this aging effect. So here is an example of a information given by Wood. This is a general flyer on ceramic capacitor of aging and some other parameters. And what they are showing here, again, this is the NPO, the class one. Now this red one is the X7R, and then there are some other capacitor of class two. You see that for the X7R, they are here showing something like minus 1.5% per decade. This I think is incorrect. This is just too small a number as far as I can understand. So this is really not hard data. This is just a general behavior of capacitor. That's what it is. Now, if we look at the data given by, say, TDK, you see that for the X7R, it's about 3% per decade, which is 2.5% per decade, which is kind of reasonable. Again, this is not given per capacitor or group of capacitor or type of capacitor. These are just general information about aging, and some other characteristic of uh, capacitors in general. So how do manufacturers supposedly account for aging? Well, it turns out that this is done in the following way. Picking a given reference time. Sometimes it is 1,000 hours, sometimes it's actually 48. Now, 1,000 hours, by the way, is only 41 days. One year is about 10,000 hours, okay? So picking a given reference time and knowing the behavior of aging, then we can say what will be the deviation in percent after this 1000 time. Okay, now a certain type of capacitor would have inherently some tolerance, say plus minus 10 percent. Okay, so if this is known, then they are adding the additional change due to aging. So now the tolerance is not specified as plus minus 10%, but rather plus 13 minus 7%, assuming that at 1000 hour, you have a drop of minus 3%. So therefore at 1000 hour, the aging is taken into account. What about above it? Well, you are on your own. You have to somehow figure it out or estimate it or something because this is not included in the tolerance of the capacitor. And as I have said, from what I've looked up, there is very little, if any, information about the aging for specific capacitors. But this is not really the end of the story. Turns out that DC bias is also affecting aging. Shown here from this paper is this plot. This is for, by the way, a polymer capacitor, which is changing a little bit with time, the aging here. This is again time. This is again semi-log uh, plot. And this is a class two capacitor. And what we see here, a very sharp drop at the beginning, and then it changes a little bit slower. And then 
the slope is actually changing. There is very little information about that. Vichet has a document which is discussing this issue, actually attempting to show that their capacitor is better. So this is a Vichet capacitor. This is a capacitor of a certain package, X7R, 100 nanofarad, 50 volt maximum voltage. And this is the case in which the capacitor is exposed to 20 volt DC bias. So they are showing here a moderate slope for the reshake component and then a sharper slope. If I look at it, turns out it is minus 3% per decade, which is for us interesting. And then they are showing capacitor of other manufacturers. They are not saying which one. Would show a sharper drop. Apparently all have the same specification like this one. But they are showing a sharper drop and then sort of it tapers on. But this is only to 1,000 hours. So you, we don't know what is really going on later on. This might be going faster and they could, this, this could be tapered and they might meet actually. So we really don't know what is going on. This is the case of 50 volt bias. And here the drop is faster. This part is now 7.5% per decade. So it's going faster while the other capacitor of the other manufacturer are dropping faster and then they're going up. Well, we really don't know what is going on in uh, certainly not at a high hour that is after 1000 hours. But it seems that there is some good news from another paper. This is one of the nice papers and pioneer papers on the subject that when the measurement is carried out to up to 10,000 hours, and this is with DC bias, we see that the aging with DC, this is without DC bias, and this is with DC bias, we see that the aging actually starts with a certain slope, and then it tapers off, and then the rate of change of aging meets that of no bias. So this is actually the drop due to the DC bias effect, which we, of course, recognize and know. I've shown it earlier. And here, we don't see this transient phenomenon. So for a longer time, we are back to the normal rate of aging. But this is one paper, one experiment, and I don't know how well does it describe all the cases and all the capacitors that are now being produced. But there is more. It turns out they, there is a temperature effect on all this aging with DC bias. So from another paper, we see that at room temperature, you have a certain aging rate, but at higher temperature, that's a bit high, but I would assume that at lower temperature, it's maybe more moderate, but it's something similar. But at this temperature, we see that under bias, we have a certain rate and then it goes much sharper this is again for x7r one particular capacitor of course i don't know if really represent all x7r capacitors so what is the conclusion here first of all there is lack of data there is very little data on aging sadly not for the cases of dc bias and dc bias plus temperature not much is known about that now at best capacitors are within the specified tolerance at 10,000 hours, or maybe another reference time, I don't know. I know some vendors are picking the 1,000 hour. After that, you are on your own. That is, at 1,000 hour, the aging is taken into account, but then at 10,000 hour, it's not taken into account in the tolerance, specified tolerance, so you have some to, to figure it out by yourself. So the advice here that one should use ample safety factor, that is, pick up capacitance which is larger than you actually need, so you'll be on the safe side. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it of interest, and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.